All right, so welcome back to the Steel City Sports Podcast. Today I'm going to be doing the If the Playoffs Ended Today prediction video for the NFL. So I know that these teams, uh, the seeding might shift around before the playoffs start, obviously, and um, still have about a month till playoffs start. But I think the, the picture is starting to come together here. Um, when the playoffs do start, I do intend on making a... Uh, video by video breaking down each matchup so I think that's going to be fun to do as we head into playoffs but um, our first matchup would be the 4-5 seed in the AFC we'd have uh, the four-seeded Titans hosting the five-seeded Ravens and this is a interesting game for a couple reasons uh, you think back to Lamar Jackson's MVP season the Titans played then and the Titans won that game uh, and then the very next year they, they met again and the Ravens won that one uh, so They've played each other in the playoffs two out of the past three years. Uh, if it happens again, I do tend to favor Baltimore in this one. You guys know if you've listened to my channel for any amount of time, I haven't been big on the Titans over their past two seasons. You know, I'm a big Derrick Henry fan, but I think the defense is really just covered up by the greatness of Mike Grable. He's a great coach, but I don't like their personnel on that defense. And also, Ryan Tannehill, I just don't trust him, particularly in big games like this. You look at last year when Tennessee was the one seed coming off of a bye, and he threw three interceptions at home against the Bengals. I just, I don't trust Ryan Tannehill in big spots. I know Lamar is going to be banged up playing in this game, but I, I want Baltimore in this one. I just, I, I think they're a much better roster. Uh, the only thing that I think could really be the X factor in this is Vrabel, I think, is a better coach than Harbaugh. And also, if Derrick Henry has a day, he has a day. I mean, he is still, even at this point in his career, he's one of the most unstoppable forces in the NFL. So if he has a big game, obviously that, that changes a lot. But I think Baltimore is the, the better pick here. Um, next, we have the three-seeded Bengals taking on the six-seeded Chargers. So, again, another uh, fascinating matchup here because... This is the battle of the 2020 quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Joe Burrow went number one overall, and Herbert went, I think, uh, sixth, fifth or sixth overall. I think it was sixth. And so these are both generational talents. Um, there's been debates online about uh, if they were to redo this draft, would Herbert go f uh, first instead of Burrow? Uh, I don't agree with that. I still think Burrow's the better player here. Uh, and I would take the Bengals to win this one, not only because of Burrow, but I just think they have a better roster. I think they're far... Farly better coached than uh, the, the Chargers are. I, I don't have really any faith in Brandon Staley. Um, he is, for me, kind of holding the Chargers back. They have one of the best teams on paper, but they're one of the most penalized teams in the NFL. I just don't have faith in Brandon Staley. Um, Justin Herbert's great, but again, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't like the coaching. So I'm going with the Bengals here in this one. Uh, and then next, the last of the first round, the wild card round in the AFC. This is a fun game. I hope we do get to see this matchup because two-seeded Chiefs hosting the seven-seeded Dolphins. We've seen the Dolphins win big games this year. Uh, they beat the Bills earlier in the year. Um, and uh, this would be a fun storyline because it's Tyree Kill returning to Arrowhead. So that would be fun. I do think it would be a shootout. None of their de defenses really particularly impress me. Um... I do think the Chiefs' defense is going to come back to bite them later on in the bracket, but I am going to take uh, the the, the uh, Chiefs in this one. It'll be a fun game, though. It'll be it'll be a shootout, and I really do hope we get to see uh, the Dolphins in the playoffs because you know Tua is fun. That offense is just high powered. Um, so if this were to happen, you know we would have Baltimore playing uh, Buffalo as the five seed. Uh, one seed matchup in Buffalo. Again, another matchup we've already seen in the playoffs. Two years ago in 2020, uh, Lamar Jackson, the Ravens did go up to Buffalo in the playoffs and it wasn't so pretty for Lamar. He didn't play that well in that game. Um, and I think the same thing would happen, you know, Buffalo, especially if they get that one seed, I think that's one of the biggest uh, home field advantages in the NFL, just how uh, crazy the weather conditions get there. And, uh, it would be honestly tough for any team to go into Buffalo and win. But, you know, I've had my gripes about Baltimore this year. I think they're they're a little inconsistent for me. Um, I, I was really hot on them like midway through the year. Um, early on, I thought Lamar could be an MVP candidate, but they've just kind of, 
uh, they've kind of like cooled off for me. So, you know, they're a good team, but Buffalo, I think, would, would soundly win this one. Um, next, we have the uh, chiefs Bengals matchup, uh, a rematch of last year's AFC title game. And uh, I think the outcome would be the same. I think the Bengals have shown that they can beat the Chiefs. They've beat them three times in this calendar year. Joe Burrow, arguably, you know, top three quarterback in the NFL right now. Uh, I think that's the best receiving core in the NFL right now. So uh, it's going to be a very fun game to see a rematch. But I am taking the Bengals in this one. Uh, and like I said earlier, the, the Chiefs defense... Uh, it's it's been patched over by how great Mahomes is. You know, he just carried this roster to, you know, being a very successful team this year. But that defense is not that good. You know, it's it's overperformed this year. But I think against real playoff competition, especially like Cincinnati, it's going to be exposed. Uh, and it has been several times throughout this year. Um, so gives us a AFC championship game of Buffalo versus Cincinnati, which I think would be an all-time great game. Um this one is really a, a coin flip to me. I think it could go either way. You know, Buffalo, uh, they were the favorite to win the Super Bowl going into this year. Cincinnati, they went to the Super Bowl last year. So it's a very, very tough, very, very tough uh, pick here. I think ultimately, huh, I I think just because it's in Buffalo, I think I have to pick Buffalo. It's It's so close. It's by a razor edge margin. Um, cause I really do have a lot of faith in Burrow, but the fact that it's in Buffalo, Josh Allen is, is playing obviously great and they, they've really established a great run game, which was kind of my concerns with Buffalo early on in the year. Um, their, their run game is really starting to come together and that's going to be a, a crucial part of them winning games in the snowy Buffalo weather. So I think Buffalo, I know it's not a, an exciting pick picking the one seed to go to the Super Bowl, but I just think the way this bracket plays out, that's kind of how things roll. Um, heading over to the NFC, we have an interesting matchup of Tampa Bay versus Dallas, the 4-5 matchup. Tampa Bay is currently 6-8, and eight, but as of right now, they would win the NFC South, and they would get a home playoff game. Kind of funny how that works out. Um, we've seen this matchup a couple times. You know, uh, the last two years, um, this was actually the opening game. I don't know why, but this year and last year, Tampa Bay and Dallas were the opening game for the NFL. So these teams are kind of familiar with each other. Um, I I think Dallas would I, – I have my problems with Dallas, but I think Dallas wins this game just because Tampa doesn't deserve to make the playoffs. It's just somebody from the NFC South has to, to squeak in here. Tampa has shown real – uh, cracks in that foundation. They are not the team two years ago that won the Super Bowl. Uh, they just their O line's a mess. Brady has clearly, you know, voiced his frustrations. He doesn't have uh, nearly as much time as he's accustomed to throw. The receivers have been, you know, in and out of the lineups with injuries. Mike Evans has had kind of a down year. The defense is good at times, but it's not as dominant as it once was. So. I have my flaws with Dallas. You know, I, I've been a, a heavy critic, crit, crit, critic, sorry, of Dak. I've had my issues with Dak over the years, but just in this game, I think it's favored by Dallas. If they just lean into their run game, which um, I think they're like sixteen and one when Zeke gets like fifteen plus carries a game or something like that, and so um, just lean into the run game. Don't ask Dak to make any big plays. I think they can win this game. Their defense can uh, carry them in this one. Micah Parsons, I think, is the defensive player of the year. They have a really good secondary as well. I think they should be able to beat the, the Buccaneers in this one. Next, we have the uh, three-seeded Niners hosting the six-seeded Giants. So I don't think this one would be that close. I, I think the Niners would absolutely bludgeon the Giants in a playoff game. Um, I think the Niners... Uh, they have arguably the best roster in the NFL. It's a shame Jimmy G got hurt because, um, you know, Brock Purdy's done a good job, but um, do you trust him in a playoff game? I don't know. I don't think anyone really does. There's there's really no argument for that. We haven't seen enough of him. He's played, what, three games? Um, so, But against the Giants, they've, they've definitely overachieved. I give Brian Dable a lot of credit. He was one of the guys I was pushing to be uh, coach of the year. If you listen to my uh, power rankings earlier on in the year, I was really, really big on the Brian Dable uh, train, and I still have 
uh, a lot of great things to say about him. It's just in a playoff game against that team, arguably the best defense in the NFL. They have uh, pro bowlers everywhere. Uh, Debo will probably be back by this time. So you have just weapons everywhere on this team. I, I think the Niners win. They're just a far superior team, even with Brock Purdy playing. Uh, and then the last matchup of that round, we have the two-seeded Vikings taking on the seven-seeded Commanders. So kind of a, a, another fun story because uh, this is Kirk Cousins' old team. And, you know, the, uh, the, the Commanders... They didn't hold on to Kirk Cousins because they didn't think he was good enough. But, you know, if they would have held on to Kirk Cousins, they would have been, I think, a pretty stable playoff team over the past couple of years because they've had a good roster. They've just had so much turmoil at that quarterback position, you know, trying Wentz and also, you know, um, uh, Taylor Heineke, serviceable, but I don't think he's good enough to win a playoff game, especially against this juggernaut team. You know, the Vikings defense is really bad. Um I looked it up like a week or two ago, and they were like 28th in yards allowed, which is pitiful. Um, their defense is terrible, but they have an offensive juggernaut, just powerhouse of an offense there. So I'm taking them to beat the Commanders here pretty easily, honestly. I don't think that's really much of a um, surprise. Uh, so this gives us the divisional matchup in the first or the second round. Uh, Philly coming off the bye against Dallas. I think Philly would. Uh, destroy Dallas in a playoff game. And it's funny because we're going to get to see these teams play each other. However, Jalen Hurts, I don't think he's playing that game. So we're not going to really get to see a, a clear indication of what that matchup is going to look like. But if things play out like this, we'll see it in the playoffs. I think Philly, they're just better at every position, including quarterback. Jalen Hurts has proven this year that he's better than Dak. Um, they're better at every level on both sides of the ball. Nick Sirianni is a, a far better coach than... Uh, Mike McCarthy is so and it's in Philly I, I just I think this is a, a no-brainer pick here for Philly uh next would be a fun one this is a rematch a couple years ago these teams played the year the Niners uh went to the Super Bowl they played the Vikings in the playoffs and they they smoked the Vikings um so it would be the three-seeded but it would be in uh Minnesota this time um I don't think that matters I think the Niners they're <sighs> It's tough because I, I I could hear the argument that um, you don't trust Brock Purdy in this position here, but they just have so many weapons. The uh, the Vikings defense is so bad that I, I think it's really just going to be a detriment to them in this kind of situation. So I'm taking the Niners to get back to the NFC title game like they did last year to play Philly. Again, boring. We're going with a one seed again, getting to the Super Bowl. And yeah, um, and a, a Philly versus Buffalo Super Bowl would be really fun. Um, I know it's not a, a you know a sexy pick, an out there pick, but Philly is the team I would win this to. I would pick this them to win the Super Bowl this year. Um, it's not just the fact that they are thirteen and one, by far the best record in the NFL. It's it's everything I said before. It's um, they are elite at every single uh, unit on that team. You know, there's not a single area that is really feels like a flaw. Like for Buffalo, you can find flaws with Buffalo. Um, their run game, even though it has developed, it's nowhere near Philadelphia's run game. Uh, the offensive line is serviceable, but Philly, again, they have arguably the best offensive line in the NFL. Um, the defense, uh, in terms of the pass rush for Buffalo, is nowhere near what it was now that Vaughn Miller is going to be out for the season. So uh, I think outside of quarterback, Philadelphia probably has the edge in everything uh, over Buffalo. Um, you know, and that they've, they've proven that they can come back. You know, it, it looked like early on in the season they were just going to blow teams out, but, like, the, the problem with Philly, people were saying, is it might be if they get into close games or if they trail late. Uh, but they've proven they can win games like that. It doesn't matter. They can win any way, whether it's a shootout, whether it's a grind-out kind of game. They just have so many playmakers on both sides. I think it would ultimately be a, a great game, and it could go either way. But I just think Philly has many more advantages than Buffalo does. And, you know, uh, so that's it for my uh, playoff bracket. Like I said, whenever the actual playoffs are starting, uh, I'm going to release a uh, video going over each game where we'll break down each thing. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Uh, tell me if you think I did a good job. Uh, please like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.